Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about the ENTP personality type and dealing with stress and anxiety as an ENTP personality type. Now, if you think about it, you can never really predict what a person is going to do, less likely even an ENTP personality type. But if you know an ENTP is stressed or anxious, you can get a base clue about what they're going to do or where they're going to go. So what I've found is stress tends to happen the most when we go from perceiving towards judging and anxiety tends to happen when we go towards from extroversion towards introversion. So what that means is often the ENTP that is the most stressed is going to hold on to their extroverted side of their personality while a person like an ENTP that is heavily anxious is going to go towards their perceiving parts of their personality. That's the thumb rule they had to think about. The ENTP moving towards introversion or the ENTP moving towards judging will invite different struggles into their life. So what that means is the ENTP is of course a person that loves starting up projects and learning new skills, but often a person that lacks the judging, which means lacks the goals, lacks the project mindset, lacks the design and organization and structure that will help them get their project done. The ENTP is also a person that tends to have the hard and thick skin that can take a punch and that can be strong in a tough situation. But often the ENTP is a person that can lack the delicacy and sensitivity that is necessary in a sensitive situation. So the ENTP is great for situations that require some bronze or some strength or some push or some glue or some tape. But they're often difficult, they're often going to struggle in situations that require you to be meticulous, careful, diplomatic, sensitive to the other person's needs and to have the right tone and the right idea and the right strategy. Yeah, often what you can see is the ENTP is the person that loves to design a new machine or a new invention but struggles to set up a business to sell the idea and to make the money. The ENTP is good for the low hanging fruits, they're able to see what's easy, what's next, what's possible, but they're gonna struggle to deal with vision and what's long term and what could be. Now the problem is often there is such huge potential in a new vision, there is such chance, there is such motivation, there is such reward to be found in a long-term project, if you can see it true, the ENTP can still not help but be tempted to think or to seek it out. So often what you see is the ENTPs are tempted to take on a new vision, tempted to start up a new project, tempted to go towards a situation that requires you to be a little bit more meticulous or careful or crafty and the ENTP is tempted to go into a situation that requires a little bit more wisdom and deep thinking and philosophical or existential awareness. But the ENTP struggles to go into and to maintain these things and maintain these habits. So what tends to happen they they start up but they never finish a project. What tends to happen is they go deep and they think about something but they don't think about it enough and they get restless and they start jump getting around and jumping and start thinking about something new to do. So the struggle is sitting down and thinking about something, getting a bigger idea about something, letting an idea develop in your head. It is ruling out ideas too quickly, n dismissing it or not thinking about it long enough and only thinking about the easy solutions or uh, using too much force or pushing too quickly in a situation where if you would have been patient and tactful and crafty, you would have got it done. So the ENTP struggles with stress and anxiety, just like every person does. Going into or working long term on a project can bring the ENTP quite some stress. And why is the ENTP stressed by thinking and judging? Why is the ENTP stressed by a vision? Well, obviously because they can see the effort and the long term approach that is necessary to make it happen. The ENTP can see that, wow, this is gonna take years. And the ENTP is going to struggle with this. Because they're going to see all those things they could do to take a minute. Oh, I can do that and I can start up that and I can learn that. And that's just done in a GIF and it's so easy. And then that project, but that project, 
that requires so much effort. So what you get is there are a lot of ENTPs out there that just jump from opportunity to opportunity and from project to project, from skill to skill, learning a little bit about everything but never do anything with it. So that's the struggle you're trying to get out of, right? At some point you recognize that you're just in a circle, you're in a spiral. People tend to fall into loops. And that's one of the greatest discoveries of the MBTI and cognitive function theory. Our mind's tendency to st get stuck in loops. Our tendency to go in circles. Almost all personality types are prone to going in circles. Why is that? Because they, produce, they pursue the relief and the energy of their dominant and their tertiary functions. They hold on to their anchors. You know, the personality has anchors. And everything extroverted is going to be an anchor to the ENTP personality type. Everything perceiving in its nature is going to be an anchor to the ENTP personality type. So the closer you can be to your anchor and the harder you hold on to it, the more comfortable, the more safe, the more calm, the more relaxed you're going to feel. And the further you take a step away from it, the more stressed, the more worried, the more anxious you're going to feel. And you can think about that in a sense because the ENFP and the ENTP are said to have a secondary function that is in either introverted feeling or introverted thinking. And you can think about that in the sense that the often the ENTP and the ENFP tends to avoid this function rather than the dominant function which they actively pursue, the auxiliary function is something difficult that they have to expose themselves to and deal with and face, but something that is also difficult to face. So what you have to recognize is, besides anchors, we also have sources of energy and sources of motivation. And anything intuitive in its nature is going to give you energy as an ENTP. And everything thinking in its nature is going to give you motivation or passion. So what tends to happen is we hold on to our anchors so we never get anywhere. We end up walking around a pillar over and over. That's the walking in circles. That's the stuck getting stuck in a loop. So what can we do? What, how do we manage the stress off other functions, functions that are outside our core personality type or our dominant functions? How do we step out of the things that are easy and into the things that are difficult? And why do we do it? The most important question is why do we do it? For that energy, for that huge rush of energy, for that passion, for that motivation. Don't you want something bigger? Don't you want something that is more huge than what you've faced so far? Don't you want to experience something a little bit bigger than what you are right now? Don't you want to grow? Don't you want to develop yourself? If you think about it, how fascinating wouldn't it be? it be if you could stick to a project and work on it and make it happen? What great things could you build if you spent more time on it, sat down with it longer, allowed yourself to customize it more, allowed yourself to think about it longer? How much bigger could the project get if you ended up pushing yourself to do these things? And then secondly, the other part beyond the energy how do we deal with the stress and anxiety of, but what if it doesn't lead anywhere? And what if it fails? And what if it breaks down? And what if people think it's stupid? And what if it ends up never selling or end never ending up getting me any money? And I put all this energy into it and all this stress and nothing happened. That's the struggle, right? Dealing with stress and anxiety. of, And the biggest of them all is perhaps, what if I can't do it? What if I can't do it? And here's where it's great to be an ENTP personality type. You know, ENTPs are some of the greatest skill builders of all personality types. Nobody tends to learn a task faster than an ENTP. Nobody tends to master a skill faster than an ENTP. And what happens once you truly master a task or a skill? Well, it makes things easier. Every skill you've learned so far while running in circles can come to be used to improve and make and see through a project. Every skill you use so far has not, while it felt random, 
been completely useless. No, everything ties together. Everything you learn, every subject you studied in school, every little YouTube video you watched, it all ties together to what you are right now and what you can do. It's all a resource. And if you think about it from the other side, if you're an INTJ personality type, what are the main struggles? Well, you lack the resources to see through your goals, you lack the skills, you don't know how, you have great ideas, ambitious projects, but how do I do it? What do I do? How does it work? And then it's something else that is very good about the ENTP, and that's the strength, you know, the strength to push through a project, you know, when people are being annoying, the strength to push through and to force yourself through a difficult situation. Okay, things are difficult, but you have thick skin. As an ENTP, you have quite thick skin and you have quite a lot of strength and quite a lot of power and that can help you get through the angry Twitter storms, the criticism on the internet, the people that are being stupid. It can help you get through almost anything. So what you need to channel is the strengths of your dominant function and you need, what you need to do is you need to channel them into getting from point A to point B. You can pick up that pillar you're clinging to and you can swing it around you. <laughs> and you, that can help you get out of this situation. You can use your anchors. And here's what I feel like with stress management and anxiety management is stress management and anxiety management is all about steadily learning to that you can always return to your anchor. Yes. I'm going quite deep right now. I'm going quite big right now. And I'm daring to think a little bit bigger than I usually do. But my anchor is right there. I know it's right there. I can always return back to it. Okay, it's scary, but I have the pillar right behind me. I have the safety net around me. I can take this jump. I can make this leap of faith. Knowing and reminding yourself that you always have an anchor is one of the greatest strategies to being able to step outside your comfort zone. You're not giving up your anchor, it's right there, but you're still taking the leap because you know you can always come back. So that's the second reminder. First reminder was, why do I do it? Because it's gonna give me energy and motivation and passion and it's gonna improve my life and it's gonna make things better. It's gonna make me happier. Then second part is, because my anchor is right there and I can always return to it, it's not going to go away. All the things I built up, the family, the strengths, the powers, the skills, everything is right there. So I can always come back to that and lean on that if I need to. So... What you're essentially doing now as an ENTP is... Uh, you're pushing yourself towards your dream self, your higher self. You know, everybody has a dream self. You know, you have all the things you've learned so far, but you have all those things as well that you're going to learn in the future. Think about that. Think about the 10-year-old version of yourself. You have all those things that you're going to be able to do in the future that you don't know right now. So that's your higher self. The higher self is that we know we're headed somewhere. We know that there's somewhere we want to go. We know that there's a vision. We know there's a future. We know there's a possibility. So what you're doing is every time you push yourself, every time you motivate yourself, every time you go into an uncomfortable situation that you want to be in, you're also getting to know and developing a stronger relationship to your higher self. You know, the thing is, the crazy thing about the higher self is the higher self is like an entity inside our heads that can look down on us or up at us. The higher self can be impressed by us and can be happy for us for the progress we're making and they can also be frustrated with us for the long time we're taking for every single time we doubt or wander or go in circles the higher self can sit there and face palm so and this is one of my most important credos or affirmations that i work with i've chosen this stress i've chosen this anxiety that makes it all easier knowing i shows my own struggles shows my own anxiety shows my own fears is way better than feeling it was pushed on me or given to me by somebody else i don't want anybody else to tell me what to do or where to go or how to do something 
I want to know I chose for myself my future and where I want to go even though it was difficult even though it brought me some stress even though I was worried even though I was scared shitless so that's the third strategy this is how you as an ENTP can deal with fear and anxiety I hope this video helped encourage you to start up something bigger and I hope it got you a little bit out of your loop if it did feel free to leave a like share and subscribe to other ENTPs and visit patreon.com slash ericdor and leave a donation. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.